Speaking of wars, one group has made a habit of it, of invading, destroying and abandoning. I'm talking about NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It's a military alliance of 32 nations. Two of them are in North America and the rest are in Europe. Today, NATO celebrated its 75th anniversary. There was a big party at the headquarters in Brussels. You had music, toasts and a cake. Today we celebrate the 75th anniversary of the strongest, most enduring and most successful alliance in history. Five years is a long time. A lot of things have changed in this period. The alliance started off with just 12 members, but today it has 32. So NATO has expanded relentlessly. Eventually, it reached the doorsteps of Russia, and that's when Moscow pushed back. We've seen dozens of NATO operations in the last few decades, some full-scale invasions, some air campaigns, some support missions, some anti-piracy campaigns. No one can question its military strength. NATO has almost 3.5 million soldiers, also more than 5,000 nuclear warheads. The question is, what have they done with all this power? Has NATO created a better world? Let's look at some of their missions. From 1949 to 1991, NATO did not do much. The Cold War was more of a staring contest than actual fighting. But after that, they did a lot. The first ground operation was in Yugoslavia. It was a multi-ethnic state in Central Europe. You had Serbs, Croats, Slovenes and Albanians. The Serbs targeted the minority Albanians, so NATO got involved. The United Nations Security Council refused to sanction this operation, but NATO did not care. In 1999, they began bombing the Serbs. 78 days of non-stop non bombing. And casualties? More than 2,000 civilians killed. Even radio stations and embassies were targeted. NATO left the region in tatters. Today, Yugoslavia does not exist. It has broken up into different countries, and these countries are among the poorest in Europe. That is the legacy of NATO in this region. Now let's look at another operation. NATO went into Afghanistan in 2001. This was after the Al-Qaeda's attack on 9-11. It's the only time when NATO invoked its collective defense clause, Article 5. One member, the United States, was attacked, so all NATO members joined in. From 2003 to 2014, they led a UN-mandated force. It was called ISAF, International Security Assistance Force. This mission ended in 2014. So the next year, NATO launched another one, RSM, Resolute Support Mission. The plan was to train and prepare the Afghan army, but clearly they failed at it. NATO's 20-year war resulted in more than 47,000 deaths. And we're talking only about civilians, 47,000. Many of them were killed by the NATO alliance. Consider the year 2019 when the UN published civilian deaths for that year. People were shocked because NATO had killed 717 civilians and the Taliban had killed 531. Here's another worrying data point. From 2016 to 2020, the US and NATO went on a bombing spree. These airstrikes killed more than 2,000 civilians out of which 785 were children. Now, don't get us wrong, going after the Taliban was not a mistake. It was an important strategic and moral goal, but NATO's method was flawed. It punished the Taliban and ordinary Afghans. Also, it's not just the scale of destruction, it's also about the aftermath. Consider the NATO intervention in Libya. In 2011, Libyan dictator Gaddafi was unleashing violence on his people, so NATO decided time to intervene. They dropped more than 9,000 bombs in Libya, and yes, Gaddafi was toppled. But look at the cost. Almost 13 years later, Libya is still at civil war. Almost 40% of the people are living in poverty. Do you see the template here? NATO unilaterally decides which battle to join, bombs the country into oblivion, pats itself on the back and then leaves. The people in those countries are left to pick up the pieces. It is like a vigilante with a penchant for blood. In fact, you can sum up NATO's methods in one picture. It's a meme on social media nowadays. The caption says, a city saved by Avengers. 
but look at what's left of the city, just a smoldering mass. If this is called saving, I think we're better off without the Avengers. <laughs>